environment plays a role in our pretexting so that we understand that there are just certain moments where it doesn't matter all of this backstory that you have, where people just aren't even going to give you that window of opportunity. It's not a conducive environment for that interaction. Yeah. I mean, think about it. If I'm on a street corner and I walk up to a same, the same exact person, I went, hey, tonight when you're at the hotel, what are you going to drink? I'm curious. They're going to be like, what? Like, why, why are you asking me this? And what, what do you mean at the hotel? Like, do you know what hotel I'm at? Like, all of a sudden now they're all just thinking and you're a creep, right? You're not, you're not a guy who won't have a conversation with. The pretext has to match your location, the person, the environment, what's happening, right? So if it was a busy street corner, I might be something like, hey, excuse me, do you have a second? I'm lost. Do you, do you know where like 3rd and 27th is? You know, I might do something like that. And now they can say, oh man, I'm too busy. Okay, no problem. Or yeah, hang on. Where's your phone? I'm like, ah, I keep trying to use the GPS, but the skyscrapers keep stopping it. It's like I'm all over the place, right? You know, and then they help, they stop and they help you. And you're like, man, thank you so much. You know, you like, I asked like four people and people are just too busy in this city, but you're here really cool. Thank you. Hey, my name's Chris, you know, and now we have a small conversation with somebody. The pretext, that one wouldn't make sense sitting at the bar. The same way the drink one wouldn't make sense on a street corner. So you have to match your pretext with the environment and what's happening around you. Otherwise, you're, like you said before, it just seems too odd and people feel uncomfortable with it. That time constraint, right? It's answering one of those questions that we all have. You know, a second, I can give you a second. Hey, do you have 30 minutes to fill out this survey? How many times have you walked by that person with a clipboard? And we've even had this in New York where we'd stop them and say, hey, change the time. If you're going to say five minutes, say five seconds just to get me holding the clipboard. Once it's in my hands, I'm more likely to fill it out and go to five minutes. But if you're starting with a long time, I have no time for you. I'm not interested. I've done that too, where I said to them, hey guys, try this. Just try saying, do you have 15 to 30 seconds for a quick survey? Try that because that's believable. But when you say like, can you, can, you know, do you have five minutes for a survey? I'm like, I don't have five minutes for you, man. No, I'm out, you know? And, I'm, and I would say, I'm going to walk back here in about 30 minutes. I want you to tell me how that works, right? And I tell them, I give them like a homework assignment. I'll come walking back and from across the street, they'll be like, bro, that's amazing. And I'm like, yeah, there you go. You know, there's your tip for the day. Yeah.